everybody, the battle continues. Thank you, Izzy. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, let me just get myself ready. Okay. So, first and foremost, uh, before we start, I would like to do an acknowledgement of country. Um, I would like to acknowledge that we are on stolen and unceded land of the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nations, and I pay my respect to their elders, past and present, and to any First Nations people who are joining us here today. So, while we gather here today to stand in solidarity with West Papua, it's important for us to acknowledge that the same system that vilified, oppresses and imprisoned Indigenous Papuans also vilified, oppressed and imprisoned First Nations people right here on this continent. While we watch settler colonial violence unfold in West Papua, never forget that we have seen over 500 Aboriginal deaths in custody since 1991. It is also important for us to acknowledge that we, while we Papuans were and continue to be victims of a colonization of our own land, here we are the benefactors of a colonization of this land. So our fight for the liberation of West Papua on this continent must first and foremost center Aboriginal sovereignty. And I would like to say to any First Nations people joining us here today, your fight is our fight and our struggle is one. So when I say free, you say West Papua. So free! West Papua! Free! West Papua! Free! West Papua! Now when I say Papua, you say Madeka. Papua! Madeka! Papua! Madeka! Papua! Madeka! Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'll be your MC here today. Um, <laughs> try my best. Probably the first and last of the jokes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so today we're gathering here to celebrate the 61st anniversary of the Morning Star flag. Um, well, it's the 61st, it's a significant day because in 1961, it, West Papua raised it as a symbolic gesture, um, as a declaration actually of our independence from the Netherlands, a uh, former colonizer. And so this flag represents our identity. The flag has seven blue stripes where it represents our seven customary territories and they are Tabi Mamta, Ha'anim, Lapago, Mepago, Sairere, Bambre and Dombare. 61 years later, under Indonesian occupation, the Morning Star flag is still a symbol to the people of West Papua of our hope that one day we will have our right to self-determination and independence from colonial Indonesia and its brutal military occupation. So our first speaker today, um, I hope Sue Bolton, uh, are you still here with us today? Hi Sue, could you please come down? Thanks everybody. I'm Sue Bolton. I'm a member of Socialist Alliance. I'm also a councillor in the city of Meribek, uh, where in the past we have flown the Morning Star flag on the top of the council building and at other, at also at another location in the Meribek area. I'd also like to recognise that we're on stolen land today and Aboriginal people in Australia face the same sort of fight that West Papuans are facing right now. And Aboriginal people in were made into refugees in their own land, which is the case that a lot of First Nations people in many, many countries around the world have faced that same that same struggle and the opening words that Izzy made just before um, were absolutely correct. 
the battle continues. So I would like to recognise any First Nations people here today um, and raise my solidarity from so myself and Social Alliance in support of First Nations people here in this stolen land, as well as our solidarity with people from West Papua. And, you know, 61 years, it's, this is a really important struggle. 61 years ago was not the beginning of the struggle. The struggle started way before that with Dutch colonisation. But then there was an opportunity for independence which was snatched away from West Papuans. And that was the point at which the Morning Star flag was raised for the first time. And that's why there's the battle to raise the Morning Star flag has always been entwined with the battle for independence for West Papua. And in that struggle, the West Papuans are fighting the same sort of fight that a lot of people around the world are fighting. And independence is on the table in the Pacific region, in Kanaki, New Caledonia, in Bougainville, so why not West Papua? West Papua needs the right to self-determination. The longer this goes on without justice for West Papua, the more the Indonesian government is going to work out ways of stealing the land, of grabbing the land, of trying to change the demographic in West Papua to reduce the percentage of the population that's Papuan. Um, the more the Indonesian government will try and marginalise West Papuan people. So it's really important. There's a really urgent struggle. There's not a day to be lost in this struggle. And already this year, the Indonesian government's got some new plan about, you know, some sort of um, new provinces and so forth, um, trying to make it sound like it's some sort of autonomous provinces in terms of management. But in reality, this is another plan to land grab and marginalize, further marginalise West Papuan people. So this is a plan that doesn't offer anything to West Papuans. It's just another part of the colonial project. And so we have to enforce independence onto the table. Obviously, the West Papuans are campaigning for independence but the rest of us around the world, and especially the big imperialist power in this region is Australia. And we've got to put pressure on the Australian government, which to my knowledge has never ever condemned any human rights abuse by the Indonesian government against West Papuans. I don't, yes, shame. Shame on the Australian government. And that is shame on both major parties, both the LNP governments and Labor governments. They've all been shameful, just as they were with East Timor up until the 11th hour. Um, they've all had a shameful attitude towards Pacific nations, including West Papuans. And I'd just like to say that Socialist Alliance will continue to stand in solidarity with the West Papuan struggle. Call out to us, you know, we're not a massive organisation, but call out to us if there's anything we can do to help. We try to cover the struggle in our newspaper, Green Left Weekly, whenever we can as a volunteer organisation. And I'd just like to say, Medica, Papua Medica! Papua Medica! Papua Medica! Solidarity and the battle continues. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, and our next speaker is from the Pacific Climate Warriors. Uh, we've brought our beautiful banner here today with us, and our slogan is We are not drowning, we are fighting. And our representative will be Yasbel Coco. Thank you for having me. My name is Yaz. Um, I'm Vasu Patiki Loma Viti, and I am a Pacific Climate Warrior. We are a youth-led network championing Pacific voices in climate change conversations. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the true owners of the land, the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and the Boonwurrung people of the Kulin Nation, 
I pay my respects to the elders past and present. As Pacific Islanders, we are far away from our home, but as the sea rise, we also rise and stand strong together as a community. We are the strong wind that will allow the canoe to sail towards climate justice in order to demand attention to the everyday impacts of climate change. West Papua is not only facing the illegal Indonesian occupation, but also the impacts of climate change, land loss and environmental degradation due to companies clearing the land for foreign logging, plantations and mining operations. The island of Papua is the third largest virgin rainforest after the Amazon and the Congo. Despite this, Indonesia's transmigration program there has been an increasing number of West Papuan rainforests being destroyed, cut down and burnt for palm oil production, which has contributed to high carbon emissions and resulted in displacement of local indigenous West Papuans and significantly um, impacting local indigenous life, culture and custom. In recent years, coastlines have been eroded. Those living in the lowlands have been affected by floods and extreme heat and cold. In 2021, at COP26 in Glasgow, West Papuan independence leaders launched their Green State vision, pledging to take decisive action to, um, to address the climate emergency and impact of natural resource extraction in an independent West Papua. The vision of the Green State of West Papua is to restore, promote and maintain balance and harmony amongst human and non-human beings based on reciprocity and respect towards all beings. The modern day concept of sustainability, meaning meetings, um, meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs and the conservation of biodiversity are important parts of the vision. The Green State vision aims to be driven by society and the environment rather than the economy. It will combine um, features of the modern democratic state with customary and community-based approaches. The peaceful green state vision of West Papua can only happen in an independent and free West Papua. We call on international governments and bodies to end Indonesia's brutal occupation and restore West Papua as a rightful independent nation. Only then can the impacts of climate change be rectified. As Pacific Islanders and as future ancestors, it is important to educate our young and future generations in our community to stand up and be the strong winds that will carry our message around the world. The strong winds that will fly our banners high and it will be the strong winds that will navigate our canoe in this movement to climate justice. Thank you. Um, you're gonna wait there because we have this chant that we do at Pacific Climate Warriors. So it's called, we are not drowning, we are fighting. So we're gonna all do it together, okay? One, two, three. We are not drowning, we are fighting. 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 Thank you, Yas. Um, and our next speaker will be Veronica Koman from the Indonesian Papuan Alliance. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica. I'm Indonesian human rights lawyer in exile here because of my West Papua work. So this is kind of impromptu speech, so excuse me if it's not too methodological. <laughs> so um, I think I'd like to start with the... Um, so 25 people have been arrested so far because of today. And uh, there was uh, fresh armed clashes in the Highlands area. It's, uh, like uh, we take it, we might see this flag raising here right? and like see it just, you know, we take it for granted. But this takes lives in West Papua, like arrest and torture. And uh, so, but, but like this, uh, actually this year's the number that I just told you is the record low uh, compared to other 
a yes, a previous yes, it's not because Indonesia is now kinder, but it's because the repression is so high right now that people cannot even gather. So that's why we are seeing uh, the low arrest. And uh, that is very statistics uh, of me, but um, so as an Indonesian, uh, I'm, I'm one of the co-founder of the uh, Indonesian Peoples for Self-Determination for West Papua. And uh, I'd like to say on behalf of my uh, fellow Indonesians who are like more and more of us, of Indonesian people, are now aware that Indonesia is colonizing and occupying West Papua. And we are deeply embarrassed, utterly ashamed of our nation. And usually uh, in Indonesia, uh, we would perform this like Indonesian people would uh, uh, like get, get to our, our, on our knees in front of West Papuan people and apologize. Um, so uh, that's what like how uh, deeply uh, embarrassed we are and, and I think we are seeing how the, this is also impacting the, uh, uh, the state, the Indonesian state because the repression is also to, uh, against the Indonesian people who speak up for uh, West Papua. And so this movement is larger and stronger than ever. And i uh, just like to um, acknowledge that and thank you everyone uh, uh, who come today and to commemorate today with us because it's, uh, I mean with West Papuans, because it's uh, totally not an easy thing to do. and my uh, solidarity always. Papua! Merdeka! Papua! Merdeka! Papua! Merdeka! Thank you, Kata Um Yeah, I mean, it's so important for us to acknowledge that we do have Indonesian solidarity and Indonesian people in alliance with our struggle. and. When you see that, that's a revolution in itself, I think. It's to show the Indonesian government that there are that its own people are uh, against the atrocities and the human rights abuses and the violations that are happening in our own, in our homeland. So thank you so much, Akabera, for showing your solidarity with us. Um, I think Izzy's gonna rap for us. Izzy, calling out for Izzy. Go, Izzy. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you everyone for coming down. This is a really important struggle. They're right on our doorstep. These are our closest neighbours, and they're dying. So, it's a slow motion genocide. Too many lives have already been lost, and that's why we've got to keep up the fight. And here, in Melbourne, in Bendigo, in Benalla, they are making the weapons that are being used and sold and gifted to the Indonesian government to kill West Papuans. These places are not so far away. And the people working for them and the people making these things are our neighbours, our families, you know, people that people that aren't, you know, that we can actually directly talk to. Just down here in um uh, what do you call it? South South Bank is Talus. This is the company that makes the Bushmasters, the tanks that the Australian government gifted to Indonesia that are being used on the ground in West Papua. They're burning villages. They're using attack helicopters to attack villages, burn villages to the ground. These are people's homes, these are innocent civilians being attacked. And the weapons are being made here. And so, you know, the fight starts here. The war can stop here if we take direct action. With the morning star we rise, waiting for the wise to recognise, liberate, decolonise, legalise the flag to fly. For those that died under the guise of a world condone, stolen or owned, land acquisition removed at gunpoint from your own home. Military brutality, Australian trained troops of reality, who's counting the casualties? As a mother cut from her hand a finger for every son that has died for this land and every daughter whose body violated in this weapon of war, genocide instigated. Bird of paradise, rise from the ashes. Phoenix born again after violent clashes. Villages burn, barefoot warriors return with poison blow darts to strike in the heart of oppression. Papu Madeka! Papu
cute you see that was so cool um and i think we've got a speaker from our filipina alliance Woo! Coming down. hello i'm alexia fuentes i'm the uh, chairperson of anak in melbourne uh, we are a Filipino National Democratic Youth Organization from the Philippines. Um, I didn't prepare a speech, so it's going to be a short, short one. But we basically came out here to show our support um, in solidarity with the West Papua movement for independence and self-determination. And like West Papua, there is also an ongoing uh, people's war in the Philippines. Um, and we uh, sympathize with the struggle of the West Papuan for liberation. Um, against colonialism and imperialism. Um, we are with you in your fight. Uh, we will stand with you uh, in solidarity every step of the way. Um, and if you have any um, uh, further uh, other events after this, uh, we will show our support with you. Um, yeah, basically. Yeah, Papua uh, Madeka. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all for coming to here, uh, gathering here at the State Library and, um, you know, we appreciate all our friends and supporters standing in solidarity with us. Um, you know, it's, it's a movement and it's a long one, but we're, we're getting there. Um, and, you know, right now back home, the West Papuan people don't have this freedom of expression or freedom of assembly like we do here with our privilege living here in so-called Australia. Um, back home, they won't be able to fly their proudly Morning Star flag because there's the consequence of imprisonment and that imprisonment can set you for 15 years behind bars. And shame on Indonesia, shame. shame. So we use our privilege here not to be the voice for the silence because they've got their voices. We're just expressing and, you know, making the voices louder and amplifying their voices. Um, so thank you so much for coming here today and showing your solidarity with us. And uh, I think we've got Heiko speaking as well. <laughs> Go Heiko. Woo! Test. Oh, I can't hear me with a mask. Hello, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to invite all the Indonesians coming down, and Veronica as well. Do you want to come down and join? Anak Bayan, Soviet Asian crew. Um, before I begin. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge um, this on the stolen lands of the Wurundjeri, Wurundjeri people, the Kulin nations. We pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Um, that panel was made last year on the West Papuan um, flag raising. It was raining hard. Cindy was there. Um, I went on a different note. So last year, we called out our own people in a weird way. So now I want to call on all um, Soviet Asians, Indonesians, and even people from Nusantara, like, we are standing with our West Papuan friends, and like, we are in this struggle together. Um, I, I don't have anything, I don't have like notes and stuff, but it's, it's really sad. The lives that have been lost from your own people, seeing people who look like us, killing black indigenous people, Shame. Shame. Shame! Shame! Indonesia out of West Papua. And we have Indonesians here standing in solidarity. And when I say Indonesians, means people from the region. If you have Japanese blood, Bugis, Boyan, everything. You know, we're all responsible for this and we're gonna stand with our friends till the end. Veronica was mentioning um, last year in Indonesia, people did the sujud. Um, we're not gonna do the sujud. 
because that's very religion based, I don't believe in that. But what we will do, we'll put our hands together in front of all our West Papuan friends and the ones at home as well and Poro who has COVID at home as well. We're with you man, till the end, till the end. So we're gonna put our hands together and remember that life's lost. The blood of West Papuans from our people. We wanna bow our heads down a bit and say sorry. Thank you very much for the speech. Not much of a speech, but we're still here. Fucking every year still here. But please, you know, for all, you know, Indonesians walking here, or Southeast Asians, man, come on. Can you watch people dying, seriously? Have you watched videos of these things? You know, it's uh, I don't know what else to say, but... Papua! Merdeka! Papua! Merdeka! Papua! Merdeka! Thank you. Thank you so much, Hypo. <laughs> um, so today we are gathering here to celebrate, but we also would like to remember all the Indigenous Papuan lives lost, um, those that were killed and murdered by the Indonesian state and its military, those that died in custodies, and our leaders, our fallen leaders, who have passed away this year. And so I would like us to just hold a one-minute silence for all the Indigenous Papuan's lives lost. Thank you. Um, and so next up will be Paula Makabori from the United Liberation Movement from West Papua, of West Papua. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, it's great to see people mingle here like a living water. I got the hope. But before I continue, like others, as indigenous people, I would like to pay my respect to the Wurundjeri people of the Polynesians, in, uh, but also all the aboriginals tribes in this land that welcome us as refugees or as outsiders to come and live here. So we would like to thank the leader past, present and emerging. On behalf of the United Liberation Movement for West Papua, one of the executive, I would like to thank uh, White Peace, um, the Pacific Climate Warriors, the Filipino Solidarity for West Papua, and Indonesian Free West Papua Solidarity as well, for your uh, commitment and their long-standing efforts to support West Papua right to self-determination, but also to support the basic human rights in West Papua. We have been listening to a couple of speech here. We're standing in peace. But back in West Papua, even before you start, if this flag rises, you will be facing heavy weaponries, Indonesian security forces. Even before you speak, you will be ended up in the truck and you will be ended up in jail. It was a sad, very sad for me to stand in here 
while all my colleagues and friends back home cannot use the same freedom to, to speak. What have Indonesia done during its periodical uh, review of human rights in general? It's a big lie. It's a big lie to, to the international community. They say that everything is okay. But we understand just this year there are mutilations against indigenous Papuans by Indonesian military. There are people being arrested. There is nothing changed. Because we spoke for so rich in natural resources, we're becoming refugees in our own land. We're becoming IDPs. Well, people here heading to Christmas. I will say that women and children, they're suffering in their own land without homes, without roof above their heads, without food on the table. Some woman dies in the jungle because of pregnancy, because of starvation, some kids also dying. I hope that Australians can stand up to their own government, through their electorate area, to raise this issue of West Papua. We are not too far in the Middle East. We are here on your backyard. There are many things that we can do together. With your presence today, give me hope, the hope of my people. We know that it's very difficult to even reach United Nations for the West Papuan human rights or the right to self-determination. Because you can name every single minerals in the world. We have it in West Papua. That is why we got this. This is what they used to clear the land and to grab the indigenous West Papuan land. And they're becoming IDPs. Because Indonesian security forces being used by all national or multinational companies. We can't just watch this. We can't. We need to stand up together. So again, I would like to thank you all for all different background. You come together means that the people back home still hope, still have a hope. The hope that will never die. Because the sovereignty never see it. When I say free and then you say Papua, uh, when I say free Papua, free and then you say Papua Merdeka, Papua Merdeka, Papua Merdeka. Again, when I say free West Papua, you say three times. Papua Merdeka, Papua Merdeka, Papua Merdeka. Thank you all for coming today. Free West Papua! Papua Merdeka! Papua Merdeka! Papua Merdeka! Once again, Free West Papua! Papua Merdeka! Papua Merdeka! Papua Merdeka! Thank you all and don't forget that tomorrow night we got a function, so, but the MC will explain more for them. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Um, and I think our last speaker is from the community. We've got a representation from the West Papuan community here in Melbourne. Oh, Adolf Mora, okay, Adolf Mora, please come down to this front. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Adolf Mora. Uh, came as a refugee as asylum seekers early in 2006. Uh, on behalf of the Papuan community in Melbourne and all across in Australia and most of West pa uh, everyone in Papua as well, um, today we celebrate uh, our Independence Day. We believe in the past we already had independence but we haven't get uh, uh, 
democratic from Indonesia. So, first of December, it's we call as our traditions, and it's became the identity for generations down to generations. Every West Papuan, every little kid knows the first December. It's our Independence Day. Uh, today. We had the uh, Morning Star Flags in West Papua. Most of the groups uh, did similar flag risings. Uh, they, they faced the struggle against the Indonesian military. Uh, Indonesian military is very, very aggressive that we've never seen anywhere, especially in uh, in the village of West Papua today, many people dying. Um, I can't say much, but I, I think um, with everyone's gathering today, to show, uh, you, all of you have shown your support that one day West Papua will be free, and we want to be live free anywhere like everyone else around the world. Um, West Papua not only have the um, uh, pro, uh, situations like any other uh, nation, I believe any other nations have the similar issues in West Papua. But we're finding really, really hard. It's been 61 years today. It's our uh, anniversary and I believe, um, yeah, first things, Congratulations for everyone who uh, are coming out today and showing your support that we're not alone. Thank you. Thank you, Nikado. Um, yes, so Nikado was one of the 43 West Papuans that came by boat in 2006, and that was under John Howard government. And uh, yeah, now they're living here, got asylum, and yeah, six to now. So. <laughs> Um, and I just want to acknowledge our little youths out at front here, our West Papuan youths for standing up. I mean, come on, please give them a clap. These are future generations and our present generation of the land and they're out here representing all the youths and all the children back home that couldn't fly the Morning Star flag. So I just want to say that I'm so proud of you guys right now. Um, and yeah, I think that's all for today. And just before we go, I just want to thank the Amnesty crew for coming out. Woo! <laughs> um, our Filipino Alliance, Solidarity Groups, our Indonesian um, Alliance Groups, and all our other solid uh, allies in the movement. Thank you so much. And uh, when I say free West Papua, free, you said West Papua. Free West Papua. Free West Papua. Free. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Oh, tell us about tomorrow, Cindy. Oh, sorry, one more announcement. There's actually a social night tomorrow at Northcote. Um, and it's from 7 to 11. It's at the Black Spark Community Centre. So please come down. There's events on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I don't have the flyers with me. <laughs> so sorry about that. But yeah, thank you. So one of the things that really drew me to the West Papua struggle is their music. And I know in this crowd there's some really talented and amazing deadly singers and musicians. And uh, we've got a Tifa here, we've got a guitar, we've got a few things and Something that really has helped this movement travel as far as it has is West Papuan music. So I'm just going to put a bit of a call out there because I know there's some superstars in the crowd. Uh, we've got a uh, Gilius here. I know there's some black sisters in the hood. And uh, pretty much every West Papuan I know is a pretty deadly singer from our guitarist. So it would be great to have you guys down here to bless the microphone. Touch people's heart. Once you've heard your song, there's no turning back. <laughs> Where's all the people? Let's go. Come on.
All the West Papuan family, let's go. We all sing. Come on.
Pas de papo à me régler. All right, give it up the West Papua community, blessing us with those beautiful tunes. So at, once it gets dark at about 8.30, there's going to be some um, projections and some footage that uh, Rocky's put together. And so yeah, feel free to stick around for that. Um, but no worries, if it gets too cold, it's all good. But if we could get everyone to sit around the whole night for a photo shoot, that would be wicked. So if you could get um, Miss Possible to get everybody sitting around the whole night, we need two rows in front with the headdresses on. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, sorry. So that's Do you reckon we could get everyone together for one last photo shoot around the Honai? Calling all community and peoples for like two seconds. Two seconds. Right. Can we get everybody around the Honai? Everybody! Ready for one photo shoot? Just so some people on this side, some people on that side facing out this way. Yep, yep, yo. So everybody yes. around the hot eye can have your little camp out. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have some people there, someone holding the flag. I think it's time.